Hello. Welcome to Indiana Arts Desk. I'm Marcus Jackman. Coming up tonight, a holiday display of model trains coming soon in Richmond and the arts calendar. But first, after four meetings, the Governor's Arts Awards Planning Committee has finished its work, at least the lion's share of it. Earlier this year, the Indiana Arts Commission announced that it was accepting nominations for the Biennial Governor's Arts Awards to be handed out in 2005. Past recipients include musicians Hoagie Carmichael, Cole Porter, and Joshua Bell, actors Avery Brooks, Carl Malden, organizations like the Indianapolis Museum of Art, the Lotus World Music and Art Festival, and benefactors and patrons in the old sense of the word. Rex Van Zant with the IAC says non-winning nominations are recycled into the next award cycle, so each nomination gets two chances. This season there were 47 new applications and 38 old recycled ones. And for the story, the experience, and also the list of artists nominated and their accomplishments, a folder full of story leads, this reporter took a seat on the awards committee as a voting member. There were 13 voting members, including a representative from the governor's office. We chose nine criteria to evaluate and score each entry on, accomplishments or contributions, the quality of the work, demonstrated history, positive impact in the community, uniqueness of the effort, whether there would be a significant loss were this work not being done, whether the nominee encouraged others, what supporting data or information was available, and what positive impact this person's nomination could have on the arts climate of the state. And it was an experience. To this former English major, merely going over 85 applications at an average of a page and a half single-spaced isn't daunting, but that doesn't make the judging of those applications much easier. There were discussions and discussions and discussions about what was discussable and decisions that are difficult enough to make for an individual, let alone a committee. For example, how does one compare the accomplishments of a major city's art council, which by all accounts provides excellent service to its community, with the accomplishments of a small chamber music association in a smaller community? Perhaps that chamber music association has achieved nationwide notoriety in its narrower field. Perhaps it has won numerous awards already and has a very high profile. Still, it will reach fewer people than the larger city's art group itself. Which brings the committee to the next dilemma. What can the numbers really mean? In terms of patronage, for example, a very well-to-do benefactor's donations of time, money, influence, guidance, undeniably important and noteworthy. But this person is giving out of his or her wealth and abundance. What about a small business whose impact is much smaller than the wealthy benefactor, but they give out of their comparative poverty, donating materials and space, encouraging others? To this reporter's ear, that second one makes a better story, but is it therefore more deserving of an award? I'm not as certain. As the person next to me in the committee added at the end of that discussion, but if the wealthy person hadn't done what he'd done, how much might have been lost? Geography was also a point of discussion, as part of the IAC's goal is to serve and encourage the entire state's art community. That's why a broad geography from Jasper to Terre Haute to Bloomington to Gary to, well, Muncie was represented in the committee's members, and we were not so subtly encouraged not to select nominations all from Indy or from Bloomington, for example. And also, as part of the raison d'etre for the Governor's Arts Awards is good publicity for the arts, some nationally and internationally known individuals from Indiana had their nominations questioned because they might not personally be present to receive the award. One had even refused to accept an award in the past because he doesn't consider his work to be art. There was also a question about whether a nominee who is fairly politically active, plus the change in governor coming up in January, might make an uncomfortable mix. In the end, the committee trimmed the 85 applications down to the top 26 scores, plus two whose scores didn't rank as highly but for whom a member made a passion plea. From there, we held rounds of voting, eliminating those which didn't make it on anyone's top seven list, adding the clear favorites to the winner's pile, and so on. Eventually, we were voting on which of the top seven would be the five winners and which the two alternates. That list now goes to the IAC's Public Awareness Committee, which meets tomorrow. Then the next step is to run the list by the governor. But that will likely have to wait until after January 10th, when Mitch Daniels is sworn in as Indiana's next top executive. After that, the winners will be announced, and the awards ceremony will be held at a luncheon in October of 2005. As the list has not been finalized, it's not being officially released yet. Look for interviews with the winners starting in the first half of next year here on Indiana Arts Desk.